about 30 kilometers from the Thai Cambodian border. And all the Cambodian migrant workers heading home have to stop here to register. And the soldiers told us that the numbers over the past week have increased enormously. And I have to say the Thai officials here were very jovial and relaxed with them. They kept the atmosphere quite light. But a lot of these Cambodians were visibly nervous of the soldiers and none of them would talk to us about why they were leaving. It took around 20 to 30 minutes before they were able to carry on with their journeys, so not too long a wait in what's pretty hot and humid weather. Their first stop after crossing the border is the dusty little town of Khoi Pet. There isn't much there apart from some swanky casinos. It's far too small, really, to cope with these numbers, up to 40,000 a day over the weekend. As you can see, they've been brought in by buses and sometimes on Thai military trucks. And once they've got themselves and all their possessions off those trucks and buses, they have to go off and search for a ride that will take them back to their hometowns and villages. Now, it looks pretty chaotic here, but over the last few days, international organizations, local NGOs, the Cambodian government and the Cambodian military have got a sort of system going, providing a constant stream of trucks and buses that can take people on. So the system is working. One man who's been in the thick of it all is Brett Dixon, the local representative for the International Organization for Migration. The issues here is it's such a bottleneck. We were quickly overwhelmed, lack of transport uh, to transport people out quickly and in the most uh, orderly way we could. Um, the military machinery kicked in from the Cambodian government, which helped a lot. We've switched to focus more on the most vulnerable migrants, women with young children, and we've been chartering buses in to bus them to their provinces uh, in the most safe uh, way we can. These numbers are unusual, aren't they? They're extremely unusual. Uh, on a, an average day, you might get 150 people being returned through the immigration channels because they're undocumented in, and being deported back to Cambodia. So it's a very unusual event, almost at crisis point in terms of having the resources to deal with it. So how long will this go on? Well, there are thought to have been around half a million Cambodians working in Thailand, both legal and illegal. Now, the new military government here insists it's only going after illegal workers. But the fear that somehow they're targeting Cambodians, that they're not welcome, has now really set in. And it's possible many more Cambodians will try to leave. A military checkpoint on the road to the Cambodian border. Their job is to monitor the flow of migrant workers. And for the past week, they've been inundated. Thousands of Cambodians every day, all heading out of Thailand. In front of the soldiers, no one would say why. Their first stop in their own country is the little border town of Poi Pet. It is utter chaos. Buses and trucks dumping their human cargoes. The normal onward transport services have been overwhelmed. I'm standing amid a sea of humanity, thousands and thousands of Cambodians who rushed out of Thailand, all trying to get to their home villages from here. Now, it still isn't clear exactly why so many decided to leave in such a hurry, but there will be a cost both to their living standards and to Thai industry. The Thai authorities have denied reports that they've started a sweep against migrant workers, only against illegal immigrants, they say. But there are plenty of those, and even legal Cambodians fear they will also be targeted. I heard they announced that all migrant workers should leave immediately, said this worker, who'd come from a chicken factory in Ayutthaya. Thai people told me that Cambodians should go home, said this restaurant worker, and to come back only when the situation is quieter. The Cambodian government has laid on hundreds of trucks to get the workers back to their homes. How they will make a living there is anyone's guess. More than half a million work in Thailand. Fear is now driving them out. By nightfall, one of two daily trains to the border arrives from Bangkok. It's four hours late, 
held up by overcrowding. So does Thailand really want to curb its huge migrant workforce? There are, as yet, conflicting signals coming from the country's military rulers. Jonathan Head, BBC News, on the Thai-Cambodian border.